since the ground is slippery, so it's hard to get. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Well, look who it is. My man! What's up, buddy? I might have progressed six years into the future, 1996. This is very uh, Back to the Future, isn't it? I like yeah. It. Check out the back window. Ooh. Oh, there she is. Nice, buddy. This is like Bass Boat Central here, man. Yeah. Oh, Lake Santa Fe is right there. Okay. Like, right behind those trees. I was going to say, I feel naked not bringing the tracker. It was all about those trackers everywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all Every right. single one of those people would pay me money to take them where I'm taking you. <laughs> it's a, this lake is a local legend. People, they don't have access, they try to get access. Really? Does it have a name or is it just like a secret name like John has for Donkey Land? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name it. <laughs> There's a few rotted boards, but you'll see them. Just watch your step. Yes. So, these are a series of lakes that are all clay bottom deep. This lake is between 12 to 18 feet deep. So it never dries up. And they're all isolated. There's no like creek or river feeding them. There's no spring. They're just deep depressions that are lake uh, that are clay lined that just don't go away. And so this is uh, my little secret spot. No invasive plants either, it's all. No invasive. I, and, and what we see is what we get, right? There's no other, like this is the lake. Well, there's a little pocket back there, but yeah, this is it. Mm. Bass feeding right there. See the little ripples? <laughs> I feel like I should have bought a house on this lake. It's, there's a people hunting for a house on this lake. It's not easy to find. I can imagine. This could this will be your actual <laughs> house you want to buy in Florida Lake or house, not the one you bought because you just moved to Florida. Yeah, this is this is wild. <sighs> yeah, any of these few lakes out here are, and it's so crazy. There's like another set of lakes just on the other side of the road we came in on. And they're totally tannic and dark and totally different. This is a totally, this is, looks like a, yeah, not like most Florida water I've seen, to be honest with you. There's the boat. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get. There's the ramp. <laughs> <laughs> but is it a rule, Ted, if like the worse the ramp is, the better the fishing is? Is that a thing or no? Uh, it might be. If it, if it isn't already a thing, we're gonna make it a thing. And you're going to see why we brought my boat, not your boat. ground is slippery, so it's hard to get. I saw that happen. I was like, that's going to happen.
feel like that's the most memorable boat launch I've ever had, Ted. You just started fishing with me, Chris. I'm just glad you're still with us. Whew. <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'm gonna get dried off and get my shoes back on here. <laughs> so I'm just taking off the um, slug out to put on this golden shiner bass assassin. What do they call this? Their shad thing. Ooh. But this was like the second type fluke I ever saw. And I think it's when Zoom came out with the super fluke was because of they put the slot in the belly. I don't know which one was first, but this is the first one I saw. And um, actually, the guys from Bass Assassin are buddies with Gary. And he, uh, there's a worm color he designed. It's like black with silver flake in it. It's pretty cool. But it's when it came out, it was definitely the best golden shiner fluke. And it's a little more plastic, denser than the Zoom at the time. It's about the same as the Super Fluke now, but. Getting it. I'm a little rusty with my pistol grip. But no, like the first crazy like spring day I ever had as a kid is with that bait. And it, it was, I was fishing at weightless at the time. We'll see how it goes today, but uh, maybe I'll text pose it. Honestly, Ted, I, uh, I like the seat. I feel at home. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's always supposed to be there. I just, it was just broken the last time. Either. All right, well, I haven't had a hit on the green Rebel Redneck yet, so I'm gonna <laughs> bust out this. I'm surprised you let me bring this, Ted. <laughs> I didn't remember being asked if you could bring it, but... Ah, I, this is true. This I don't, I, I didn't object to the idea. <laughs> uh, I'll get this thing hooked up. Let's see. I've actually never seen one function. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's gonna function today, Ted. <laughs> Somebody gave me one in the... Oh, it's working. I, never get it to work. I don't know if it is, uh... I don't know if it's calibrated, but here is the vintage color selector invented by Dr. Lauren Hill. And I don't exactly even know how this thing works, but basically you dip this uh, sensor into the water, ideally at the depth you want to fish, and it lets you know what is going to be the most productive color for either stained, clear, or muddy water. With current light conditions. With current light conditions, yes. I remember the sales <laughs> Oh boy, I'm... All right, let's see. So, I would say this is clear water, and it says... Now, I just... Uh... How much... How deep did you put it? I put it pretty deep. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to put it back at the surface. It says O. Oh. I don't know if that's just because it's like a broken clock and that's where it is, or, or that's the actual reading, but O oh is sort of a white. And I actually happen to have a white redneck, so... Oh. I don't know if it's working or not, but I'm going to put it on. Maybe I'll put on a black one to see if we can... You can put on a black one, yeah. So the way that the color selector worked is Dr. Lauren Hill was a marine biologist, and he did a study where he put different color crawfish in a uh, fish tank with largemouth bass, under different light conditions, he saw what colors the bass would strike. And from that, he made that color selector gauge. So a lot of companies picked it up back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and Rebel was one of them, and they came up with this whole line called Rebel Rednecks. What's wild about the color selector is, in general, it was usually pretty wild primary colors, just bright uh, greens and blues and reds. And my color selector says that <laughs> this color is going to be the one. And Ted says he wants a black, which is probably going to be the better color of the two. It was funny, but back in the day, everybody, yeah, I think even I saw Roland Martin doing a spot on the color selector. It was a thing. Bass Pro Shops would have two-page spreads dedicated to color selector uh, endorsed or colored lures. And then it went away, like, almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we take it for granted now that, you know, we have frogs and we have all that stuff that can, you can work over the cover, but in the 80s there wasn't a lot of stuff. You had like spoon, like the silver minnow and stuff you could throw in there, but it, and you could throw a worm, but it didn't really do a lot. We didn't have the speed worm yet. 
or I didn't know about it yet if, if it existed. Um, we didn't even have the flukes yet, but this little redneck, the first day I ever used it within maybe three or four casts, I caught a three and a half pounder that blew up through the dollar pads to get it. And I pre pretty much bought out the local tackle shop in Wareham, Mass. So I would go up there every summer as a kid, I, growing up here in Florida, we'd, I'd spend the summers up there. So, yeah, on my days, of, when I didn't have to do sailing or whatever, all I did was fish in the ponds around my grandmother's house. So, the redneck was definitely my first heavy pad burning soft plastic. And so I've been wanting to get my hands on some. And then you did an episode, what, a couple years ago now? One of the first, I would say, probably 10 episodes I did was on the redneck. Yep. And I commented, and you was one of our, maybe our second interaction. And here we are. You brought some with you, and you brought my favorite color, which is the opposite <laughs> of what the color selector said. And we're gonna see how we do. I've got a feeling uh, ignoring the color selector on this one might prove to be a, a good idea. We'll see how it goes. I've never actually caught one on the, uh, I guess it's almost like a white gray. So. I, I did put a weight on too, because as I recall, I used to fish it with a, a little bullet weight, so. And lucky for you, Nick, you know the guy that bought out the world's uh, last final dead stock supply of rednecks, so. He seems to own a few things like that. <laughs> I think they're in Texas, though. I've got to get them back. But, yeah, I've got about, I would say, probably a good 25 pounds of, of rednecks stash somewhere. Right, I'm using the Lunker City Ooh. hook, though, the one they designed for the... Uh, Sluggo. Which, by the way, is actually my favorite soft plastic stick. I don't think that hook gets enough credit. That's an awesome hook. Yeah. I just looked at my little retro hook box um, before I dug into my regular hooks. I was like, oh, I still use that hook. The text pose, and they still sell it too, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if it has something to do with the whole deal with the, the redneck. And I think why it was popular or why it worked had more to do with the tail than with the, the gills. But that was sort of the whole deal, was the gills were supposed to be uh, Like a salamander. Like a salamander. And the gills fall off, and they still eat it. So. And they still eat it. But man, I would say though, the craziest day I had with this is the little farm pond, and the bass were just, I've never seen them more mad at a bait than they were at this thing. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. They would, they just, yeah, it's like that first frog-like bite when they would come out of the cover. Ooh, that tail. Yeah, look, you can really see it with the white one. I got one. Oh. <laughs> Not too big. Yeah, right. buddy. And a little big. My redneck work. Let's check it out. My, my first bass on a redneck since probably 1985 <laughs> or 6 or maybe. I don't know, when did they come out? Early 90s, late 80s? Yeah, somewhere in that, it's always later than you think. It's probably like 91, yeah. 92. First one. On the black. On the black. First cut and retie of the day for me, so. I'm gonna put on that uh, four and a half Snagless Sally. See, who was that? It was an old time at Gary's last time we were there talking about the Snaggle Sally, and he said that he had a guy who used to fish a, a pork chunk on the back of it. Yeah, I forget that guy's name, but yeah. You said you brought pork? I happen to have some pork chunks. You might have to put some on. So, yes, yeah, so we've got the black, blue, and purple Snaggle Sally. And I've got a bunch of old school pork, but I also have some new school pork. There's the number 11 frog in the blue. So this actually could be a good little... Uh, it'll add a little weight to it. It'll add a little weight to it. <laughs> that doesn't suck. No, Look at that. that looks good. <laughs> oh, yeah, buddy. All right. I keep that out of the stringy grass. Okay. Yeah, ever since that day to Gary's, I've been wanting to throw this thing with a pork chunk. Yeah, I might actually take off something to put that on. 
<laughs> How's it look? Looks better with a bass on it. Yeah. Such a strange concept now, but you know, before plastics, I mean, what were you going to use to give that lifelike action? <laughs> a, a dead hog. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea if you think about it. I used to use more of the ribbon. Is there a slot in these or no? There is. I usually go hard side first, but, and it's right toward the very end. And it's right in the middle, and it's right toward the very edge. It happened. It did happen. Oh yeah, buddy. I um, I saw him waking behind the lizard, past the pad, and dropped her down. And there she was. That's official. First uh, first Florida bass. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> That's appropriate retro sized bass as well. Yeah, buddy. First bass on the old uh, Rebel Redneck. First Florida bass. First Florida Since bass. Being a Florida resident. <laughs> you caught Florida bass before. I've caught Florida bass before, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, should admit that on the channel. Very sad. The bag leaves. I think he's still on there. All those hooks, you know, they get caught. Yeah, he's still on there. First fish I've caught on one of these in a long time. Got red lips. Little guy. What'd you get him on? Little Bagley's. So it's a, people are like, oh, it's a crank bait or it's a jerk bait. It's like, yeah, but it's a top water. It's a wake bait. I was just with the prop on the back. And I was just jerking it and stopping it, not actually uh, re waking it, more like a, Ripping it like you would a devil's horse. Oh, yep. there you go. Haha, <laughs> I got one. A little bit better. Is it? That's Tied it. it. Ooh, there we go. Nice. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's maybe a pound. No, yeah, pound and a quarter. Let's check him out. That's how you want him to eat it. T boned <laughs> it. T boned it. Yeah. I did change the hook. So. That nice one? No. Looks nice. <laughs> the pads are just enhancing the splashability. Ah. Uh. Might have come off. No, he's still off. The hook went out of him, and so the hook is caught in the pad. So the line is through his lip, and so he couldn't get off. <laughs> and the hook's down here. That's a that's a nice one. Yeah, I guess it's a little better than. It's about as good as my other good one. I want to catch one that eats this one. I have caught a seven pounder that there was a tail that big sticking out of its throat. Woohoo! It works. I think this is what I'm going to stick with for a little while. Man, listen to all this fish in that grass stuff. Snaggless Sally with a little grub tail. It's the closest thing I have to a bluegill that I can fish in here, other than a worm. It's pretty funny that we ended up putting it on the same rod. That is, well, it's, it my, spin, it's my spinner bait rod. It's working really well for me. Oh. Nice. Yeah, keep throwing the salad. Okay. Apparently.
Nice double hook set. I like that. <laughs> I didn't want to lose him. No. There you go, buddy. All right. Here we go, Bass and Buds. A third of the way there. <laughs> A third of the way there. <laughs> He's a good-looking little bass. So he hit on the old... Uh, this is not the Zoom Fluke, actually. This is the Bass Assassin, which... I used to fish this Zach bait a ton for striped bass. The Superior's Fluke. Is the oh, I, I love it. Um, and it's a Florida-based company, so... I was like, yeah, I was like, I grew up here. I'm not young. Got it? Got him. Awesome. There he is. Told <laughs> ya. I love that you can hear it chugging on the way in. <laughs> how, how much better of a top water do you get than that? Dalton special. Yeah, buddy. Oh, man. That's awesome. To quote Marlon Bates, it's official. <laughs> it is official. So that is my first bass on the Dalton Special, which I'm pretty excited about. My favorite top water of the old school. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think that was the shallow fish. Oh. Um, see? Yeah, they came right for it. Oh, you weren't kidding. Wow. I mean, these aren't big fish, so they only need six inches of water. Yep. The 10 pounder needs at least 10 inches of water. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Come on, get up. Oh, he's still on there. <laughs> Yeah, the trolling motor's wrapped up in the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, wait. Sorry. There's the bass. He's hiding behind the weed. <laughs> so, what are we set for? <laughs> All right, bass and buds. Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, Retro's got to head for the barn, but but Mr. Lincoln is going to be putting in for a couple days here. So we were only catching some smaller fish today, and I figured that I would you know try to help his luck a little bit by leaving early, which is always a, a sure way to ensure that your fishing buddy catches like 50 fish or his PB. So so Ted, um, you're welcome. <laughs> but I mean, my goal is to get you six fish. We got four. We got four. Yeah, we're close, and you, you hooked more than six. I did hook more than six, and I am going to put the and camera away and keep casting, so you never know. That could be the, the kiss of death as well. And, you know, you finally are official Florida fisherman. This is true. This bass is true. Fisherman. Couple couple firsts today on the Retro Bassin Show, so I did catch my first Florida bass since becoming a Florida resident, and also my first fish on the Dalton Special. Which we're going to do a history of real soon, actually, featuring Mr. Lincoln and some other folks as well. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, uh, definitely head on over to Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life on the YouTube. Give him a subscribe as well as Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life on the Instagram. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys are looking for some more old school content, you can click right here, right where Ted is. Otherwise, I'll see you back here, same time, same place. And until then... I'm just showing off the snagless Ooh, Sally. Ooh, the snagless day. Sally. Keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.